We have seen business slow down. That is obvious. Apart from collapsing in many business, and many more will collapse if you don't treat it properly. But also, business who are not collapsing or not collapse yet will slow down severely, as we have seen. The whole production chain in the whole world are so badly affected. It's disrupted everywhere. Therefore, the global supply chain are not functioning properly. The National Building Institute International, or NBRI, was founded in Thailand to develop morally guided leadership with the management skills to further develop nations. So each year, the institute organizes the International Conference on Nation Building, or ICNB to bring people from across the continents and sectors together to exchange ideas on current matters. So this year, the event was held on September 8 uh, until the 9th in Bangkok. So this is the tangling of such uh, topics as uh, overcoming the COVID-19 crisis. To, to find out more about this, we speak to Professor Dr. Kring Sak, Jeroen Wong Sak. He is a founder of NBII ICNB Conference uh, Chairman, and he also senior fellow at Harvard University. Sawadika. Sawadika, I'm very happy to be with you again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's great to see you back with us, Professor. Well, to, we cannot uh, get out of this uh, pandemic, so what we is it going to be long with us for some time? And uh, so, uh, what kind of what have been the most severe economic impacts caused by COVID nineteen, both uh, on national and global scale, sir? I think that COVID will remain with us until herd immunity is happening around the whole world mm -hmm. and also in each country because if you still have isolated spotted that are not being treated properly it will spread again in mutated variants all over the world may many, many more rounds therefore we cannot treat the world as a whole as distinct segments we have to treat the world as a connected world Therefore, we have to see that in the long term, this will only go away to become less severe. It will become a no, like normal cold, normal flu, only after herd immunity is achieved all over the world. Therefore, we are living with it. COVID will not disappear. It will, it will become tamer. It will become manageable eventually. But now, we are already experiencing the impact of COVID in a huge way, not only in the mortality rate of the fatality rate, and so on. But in terms of economics, as you mentioned, yes. we have seen the slump in mm. economic world. Exactly. 98 years already, we haven't seen anything as severe. Therefore, it's a century thing. It's an e economic severity being impacted so badly all over the world without any other country being exempted. And we have seen in, in terms of many things business collapsing mm -hmm. and if those yeah. are not collapsing yet it's because of some kind of artificial lifelines yeah. are being given a grace extended so that the bank would not recall loans mm. or company with problems with cash flow are uh, being treated softly and tread carefully to allow them leeway to continue to survive mm -hmm. we have seen business slow down that is obvious apart from collapsing in many business and many more will collapse mm. if you don't treat it properly mm. but also business who are not collapsing or not collapse yet will slow down severely as we have seen mm. the whole production chain in the whole world are so badly affected mm. it's disrupted everywhere therefore the global supply chain are not functioning properly mm. logistically we're in a shamble everywhere logistic is a problem 
We have seen containers that are being sent around the world's global harbor and the ports, mm -hmm. unable to fill their goods in a symmetrical way to return back to the various destiny okay. in that we have. So therefore, the supply chain is problem. The logistic of delivery is problematic. Mm -hmm. We've seen also the issue of unemployment mm -hmm. that is everywhere, mm -hmm. huge unemployment. Therefore, difficulties with hardship that is being sustained by some artificial pumping in of money, lifeline to help the individuals who are in a nation who are at the hard, hard raw of the deal. Mm -hmm. The poverty-stricken people are being helped by government hands out in some form or fashion, subsidies of mm -hmm. some kinds. And therefore, people are in hardship. Mm -hmm. And we have seen, obviously, these are the ramifications. Purchasing uh, capability is not there because uh, people are not earning enough. And therefore, it's affect the manufacturing, affect the production. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we see in all these work from home, uh, productivity have decreased in many sectors because people are not working in team, in synergy, at the same physical presence right. and work from home, work in some place, but not work in many places. And therefore, it's affecting productivity everywhere. Yeah. So okay. this is some of the description yeah. I, I would like to mention. Professor, you, you mentioned about the economic, economic slumbering. So for that, that you, is it in connection? There's a reason why you arranged the fifth international conference on non-building and its, and, and, and its goal, right? Right. Let me, let me mention to you why we organize this annual conference. Uh -huh. It is a goodwill of Nation Building Institute, Thailand, and Nation Building in International. We have a number of affiliated organizations like Nation Building Institute Malaysia, uh, we have some friends in Korea. We have many other countries coming together. In fact, this conference is very unique. In fact, it's the biggest non-governmental conference in Thailand. We have 50 speakers from every continent of the world. We have 2,000 in attendance in online uh, and hybridized. We also have from 50 countries, people from 50 countries joining this conference in the last few, uh, the 8th and 9th September. So it's a huge conference on the very particular topic okay. of innovative strategies uh -huh. for recovery okay. of, uh, after the crisis of COVID. Mm -hmm. So it's become very a pertinent uh, point to bring together all kinds of people okay. to, do, to do this, this uh, brainstorming but, but discussion gathering, proposal. But, yes, sir. but the gathering of the people like that, so what, what kind of uh, format is going to be held this time? We had we had people of both dignitaries who are prime ministers or presidents of the country who are controlling the mm. management of their country at, uh, in our conference. We have deputy prime ministers of many countries from Cambodia. We have deputy mm. prime minister from Thailand. Really? Uh, we have prime minister. We have president. We have representative of the key uh, gov head of government. We also have policymakers mm -hmm. at the ministerial level, mm -hmm. ministers and also permanent secretaries of various ministries around the world. Mm -hmm. We have been ministers from across the board in many countries. We have business leaders. We have top academia, uh, president of universities. We have professors. We have all kinds of people with expertise in health, in economics, in politics, in issues that are pertinent to the recovery. So we, we have seen all this coming together uh, in, a, in a forum that is difficult to come together. I'd really like to hear about the innovative strategy for crisis recovery and non-building that uh, is the theme of this year, right, sir? Right. Yeah. Let me let me mention this conference. We send out key outcomes mm. and key proposal. It's mm. not just a talk shop. It's really a thing shop, a talk shop, and a action shop. Mm. What they do is that we send out ideas so that is implementable to the whole world in according to the theme. For example, in my special address, which is always addressing the very topic that we mentioned, I've sent out many suggestions. For example, I say that there must be a better tool 
for us to be able to try out in the in the in the social lab, in the economic mm-hmm. lab, mm-hmm. in the ideas that before you implement any policy, let's try out in our modeling. We I call that political, economic, social, political modeling, mm-hmm. where it's. It's very much like macro e c o n o m y modeling with the yeah. World Bank and the IMF, yeah. the Asian Development Bank, and the Central Bank of many country use economic w i d e modeling to uh-huh. to predict economic outcome. But for us, we say we have to go beyond economics uh-huh. because there is interrelationship between so uh, societal, political, and economics, uh-huh. and it's hard to quantify. Therefore, we create mathematical modeling to simulate these two. To say that okay, if we try out this policy, what would happen mm. to the various aspect? Okay. And in that lab, in this policy tool that we have, uh-huh. we send out message that the whole world cannot just think just either uh, uh-huh. COVID uh, health uh-huh. uh, health issue or uh-huh. economic issue. It had to trade off, trade uh-huh. off. Okay. If you if you do too much. E- uh, economic lockdown, for example, mm-hmm. it will affect the economy badly. It may help the the mortality rate and the fatality rate. Okay. But if you do too much mm-hmm. on the 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 protection of the health mm-hmm. and infection, it will also affect It's economic right. slump badly. Ah. And the societal, you can see many prime minister have been changed already <laughs> in the world due to this COVID crisis. Mm-hmm. Societal. Problem people demonstrate everywhere, protesting everywhere in the whole world. Okay. So you can see the relationship. So our proposal right. is that policy maker cannot think of some issue only. It have to trade off many issues in their decision making or policy. Oh. So that's one example that we send out ideas that that have never been done, and mm-hmm. it's been shown that people done policy in a way that never trade off. Various things. Okay. Uh, that's point number one. Professor, can I take a little break and then we're going to come back for your continuation for the second point. Okay. Follow with the future of Thailand. All right. Let's take okay. a quick. Let's take a quick break and we'll be back with more of Thailand today. Don't go away. Thank you very much, Kim Kritika. We'll keep you updated on the story. Stay tuned. You're watching Newsline. Welcome to Thailand Today Program. NBT World: A Vision of Thailand. Welcome back. You are watching Thailand today. We continue our discussion with Professor Dr. Green Sak j e r u n w o n g Sak, ICNB Conference Chairman. On the fifth international conference on nation building, yes, sir. Uh, welcome back, and um, maybe you like to continue the point of the strategy to be to be used for for the, for the rest of the world, also including Thailand. Please. Let me let me mention apart from the tool, the proper tooling that needed around the world, which I noticed that the entire world lacking. Mm-hmm. Most of the tools are very much departmentalized into either economic tools, mm-hmm. thinking in silo, or yeah. health health management tool, thinking in silo, but never trade off because they don't, there were no tools to simulate the mm-hmm. policy impact. And yeah. that's what I suggest that we need a simulation of policy impact, so that we can try out in the lab, in the in the lab of the computer, 
not in the real world, so that the people mm. suffer badly. Mm-hmm. In like many countries have have been happening during this last almost mm-hmm. one year and uh, nine months, yeah. and so on. So what I'm trying to say is that policy in two is important for trade off. Number two. I suggest, for example, another very important thing is that international cooperation is so mm. important to fight COVID and mm. other crises that is coming, especially mm. pandemic. Mm. Why? Because the whole world is interconnected. If you if you don't solve fully at the world level, it will affect you somehow later. No. Now the the whole world oh. has gone wrong. 90% of the, for example, vaccines of COVID. Is in the rich country, mm-hmm. less 10% is among the poor countries, mm. and if the rich people think that they could compartmentalize and say, okay, we will work among ourselves, the rich people, uh, we leave the poor out into into the cold in the dark and let mm. them fight for themselves. Mm. Like today, Africa only have three percent of vaccines, mm. and and the whole world left Africa out of the equation, mm. and in many parts of the world, even in Asia, Latin America. So mm-hmm. if we don't think global, mm-hmm. we don't think cooperation. Mm-hmm. It will affect the rich country, the Western countries mm-hmm. eventually. I think it has gone very badly in the entire mentality of the world that the yeah. global corporation are not there. Everyone yeah. forsaking others for their own self protection, and that's not good. Therefore, yeah. what I'm suggesting is international uh, cooperation in the real way. What okay. are the real way? Let me All give right. example. Okay. The vaccine scheme. Cannot be just token Covax. Mm-hmm. That you just do a little bit just to feel like we have done something to ease our conscience. But mm-hmm. we have to really help the the country with needs, mm-hmm. and we have to come together and say, so, "Hey, let's plan the entire world a vaccination so that at least eighty mm-hmm. percent of the whole world are vaccinated." And we have to plan the production, plan mm-hmm. the financing, plan the delivery. Plan the vaccination okay. process. Plan the personnel. Uh, we have to really think of okay. the global okay. operation. Okay, professor, because that is um, maybe not at this period of time. Because uh, there's a whole world must sit around. But uh, now, if each country have to care, care for their own own business first, because we are in trouble, they are in trouble. This is so, unfortunate. Yeah. If we do it uh, for our own, it because it's the last uh, resort. If you can't help one another, then you help your own. But ah. those some can help your own, some cannot help themselves. Yeah. So yeah. this is a problem in the yeah. world. Professor, maybe I like to narrow down into Thailand, please. So, in your opinion, we need to hear about what measures does Thailand need to carry out in order to recover from this pandemic. Let me say very clearly: yes, I have been writing two books, the first two books in the world on COVID. Mm. Is very thick. Two books. Mm. One book yeah. is Future Disruption, COVID Dude. Revolution Analysis. The written second book who? is Lead. Written by uh, who? Is, uh, is written by myself. Oh, really? In the early stage of COVID, uh-huh. is bestsellers in Thailand. You at uh, Jola Longkorn University is uh-huh. a bookshop really? and everywhere. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So two books. Uh-huh. Uh, one Future Disruption, COVID future Revolution disruption. Analysis. Uh-huh. Number two. Lead and manage in crisis time. Lessons from COVID. Ah. So what I'm trying to suggest is that we need to think and mm. we need to act mm. so that we solve COVID problems. So I have told the the whole entire Thailand for a long time what to do, and it's still relevant in those two books. But let me mention a few that we need to do now at this juncture, mm. at this time when we are on mm. air. Mm. We have to think, for example. Make sure that we have enough vaccines for the entire people living in Thailand, not just Thai populace, not yes. just Thai population, but mm-hmm. residents, overseas residents living, residing in Thailand. Mm-hmm. We have all together 68 million Thai people and 8 million people who are residencing. We have mm-hmm. 76, 76 million people. Oh, If we yeah. need two doses, we need 152 million doses. Mm-hmm. If we need more doses. The booster, how many we need? Make sure we have all the vaccine in place, mm-hmm. secure them, mm-hmm. and f- speedily mm-hmm. get all the vaccine enough, and mm-hmm. have the vaccination program mm-hmm. that is effectively quickly, okay. not slowly vaccinating. Maybe one million a day. We mm-hmm. need to 
get people vac vaccinated within two months. Mm -hmm. Completely done. We have okay. done some already. We need yeah. to do completely quickly so yeah. that the mutation and yeah. mut mutated variants would not mm -hmm. take effect. And we have to really fast speed in our logistic, Very in nice. our making sure that our people got yeah. the vaccine quickly. Oh, yeah. Then the next step, exactly. we need to think of the medication. Uh. Those who are infected, now we have to think of medication. You can do it by whether Western medication, mm -hmm. our own medication, mm -hmm. our own herbs, mm -hmm. whatever that is able. Let's okay. try work it out in our own lab to make sure that it's effective mm -hmm. and start going for the more convenient medication for okay. those who are already infected so that they're not severely affected or they're not in, in, in death. Uh, uh, we have to be really yeah. careful okay. that medication is the next step we need to okay. look at. Okay, now maybe what you are talking about is I think very useful and uh, definitely it has to be uh, discussed and shared during the meeting, right? And, and so can you, can, you, can you tell me that uh, oh, how can it be assist to the country and uh, informing the government policies that will be able to revive Thailand and our economy? In terms of economy, it's obvious. If we lock down all the times too, too severely, the economy will be in the shambles. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the only way is to open up the country as quick as possible without hurting the people medically, without hurting them health-wise, without making them die uh, in, in the COVID crisis. So what we need to do is at the same time where we're vaccinating people, and provide mm -hmm. medication completely, we need to quickly open up the economy. Mm -hmm. If we can't open the whole Thailand, open selective, important spots everywhere. The two sectors are very important for us to, mm -hmm. to revive. One is export sector, two is tourism. Mm -hmm. But tourism are not going to come by quickly. But the airplane, the hoteling mm -hmm. is in a problem. Therefore, who are the tourists that will be able to travel is the regional tourism yeah. and the domestic tourism. We need to get the neighboring countries, mm -hmm. Malaysia, Singapore, mm -hmm. people have trust in Thailand and mm -hmm. come to Thailand. Okay. Tourism have to be revived somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then trade. We need to create our supply chain that is not disrupted and make sure that our export market are diversified so that the market and absorb our export. Thailand is export oriented. And if we don't revive this sector, the economy will not move fast enough. Okay. And the next thing that we need to do is to create cell, cell reliance of some sort mm. during crisis. Mm. Like what I call, I create a new term called self-sustained community. We yeah. need to set up self-sustained okay. community everywhere so that people can survive the basic needs yeah. during this time of economic difficulties. All right. Uh uh, sorry that time has, uh, uh, we don't have enough time for this, but, but very interesting. And I do agree that because if the government or whatever people who, who concern on this matter listen to this, they would be, they have, should have brought it into action and things could be better. In fact, there's many more things I want to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> many more well, things. Sir, what well, to I do. Th thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much. And thank talk you. Talk to you later. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Kreng Sakkeren Wongsak, founder of NBII. He is also a senior fellow at Harvard University for talking to us about the fifth international conference on nation building, which took place in Bangkok. That's all the time we have for today's show. We broadcast every Tuesday to Friday at 9 p.m. on NBC World and live on YouTube channel. Do not forget to like and comment on our Facebook page, Thailand Today Online. I'm Kusuma Yotha Samut. Sawadee